Well, what's happening with the debt collectors and everything else, if I'm understanding you correct. Away from that, like I've got credit, I'm locked down on my credit where like if anybody does any inquiries, uh -huh. I get a text message. So you now. put a, put a um, fraud alert. I put a fraud alert, yeah. Right. But I mean, okay. is there anything else short of changing my name that I can? No, I mean, no, it, it won't because it's your social security number that everything's tagging with. That's what it is. So changing name is not going to help. So, anything else? Any other questions? Yes, sir. Credit freeze on your your credits uh, these days. It sounds like it, it might not be as, as effective yeah. as uh, Clark Howard says. Yeah. Um, question: If you couldn't hear it, was how effective is a credit freeze? A credit freeze is actually a pretty effective tool, but remember, it's only going to protect your credit. It's not going to keep somebody from getting a job in your name or doing any of the other things. Um, but it is an effective tool. A credit freeze is designed for someone that doesn't is not apt to go out buy a new car today, open up a credit card account, anything like that. It doesn't impact your existing credit. It only keeps anybody from starting new credit in your name. You freeze your credit. Um, you can actually go in. There's um, uh, the three credit bureau's numbers are in the brochure. You freeze your credit. If you know you're going to buy a car this weekend, they give you a PIN number. You thaw your credit. You buy your car, and then seven days later, it freezes back, and it gives you that absolute protection. The only falsehood in it is it's only going to protect you on the credit side. It's not going to protect you on the other stuff where we're seeing people do insurance. Let me tell you, the worst one I ever saw, was a lady from Chicago that Jackson Memorial Hospital in Miami was hounding her for a debt that they said she had had a procedure done. She was 72 years old. When I finally got through the bottom of it, her procedure was she had had a baby at Jackson Memorial Hospital. All right? I, I immediately saw me and her on Jerry Springer together, the Today Show, everything else. But that's what they were hounding her for. So remember, it'll only protect you on the credit side. But it is a good tool, absolutely. Yes, sir. All right, I'll come right here and I'll repeat it. You have your their, their visa check card. If you go out of town or out of state and you use that card without telling them, they shut your card off. Right. Um, yeah. If basically saying one of the credit unions, if you go out of town or use your card out of state, they'll shut your card off. That's called parameter spending, is what that is. So what happens is, shortly thereafter, you'll get a phone call right. and you enter all this personal information, and they'll turn your card back on. But what you were saying right before you ended your program was that could be a bad person. Right. Well, it could be. What I would encourage you to do is when you get that phone call, say, I'll call you back, hang up, look on the back of your credit card, there's a number there. But if they shut your card down, it's called parameter spending. The computer monitors your spending habits. And so if you're someone that never goes out of town <coughs> and then they see two purchases in Georgia, it triggers it and they shut it down. The good idea, too, is if you're going out of town, you can let them know and then they'll take that off your, your spending habits. So if you're going out of the country, especially do that so that they know you're going to be out. But you can always call that number on the back when they call you. I don't like talking to anybody that calls me. If they're calling me, asking me for something, I want to hang up. Don't, don't be fooled by if they leave you an 800 number on your answering machine because they have the 800 number that's been forwarded to them from it. All right? Yes, sir. Do you have any advice as to the effectiveness or the, the which ones are better as far as the uh, identity theft protection companies? Yeah, you know, um, there, there are several out there. Obviously, um, LifeLock, Kroll, um, Legal Shield. there are several out there. It, it really comes down to looking which one's best for you. A lot of the banks now offer it. A lot of the credit bureaus are offering it personally. It really comes down to what looks best for you. Um, there are some out there that are searching the global web for your information. Uh, that they're constantly seeing if your social security number is sitting out there or if somebody's trying to sell your information. So look at what works best for you and what you're really looking for it to do. The thing with the credit card or with the um, uh, identity protection companies is they're doing a lot of stuff you could do yourself, but most of you won't do it. Most of us are too busy in our daily lives to do it. It's um, like changing the oil in your car. You can go out and lay down in the driveway and get your arm under there and get all greasy and everything or you can take it for $15 down to the express place and they'll do it for you. Same thing applies with those, but they are good. They're another layer of that bulletproof vest that we really want you to put on. All right, yes sir. How are we coming with catching the bad guys? Actually very good. Our task force has um, taken off. We just took off an individual down in Melbourne that had um, 600 different forms of identity in their house. 
Um, I, I've tasked our team with focusing on the major organizations that are targeting hundreds of victims. That's what I really want our team to focus on. Um, they, you'd be shocked how many there is. And, and I'll give you a, a statistic that's going to put Brevard County into what, why I'm so concerned. We rank 113th in the nation in the most incidents of identity theft in the entire country. The city of Chicago ranks 115th, two behind us. So when you look at a major metropolitan area that's ranking two behind us, it's great concern for me. Our senior population drives that up a little bit, but we've gone from not having, in, in the past several months, we've gone from not having anybody investigate it to now we are 12 person strong investigating it within our county. What I will tell you is those 12 members, within two weeks after they started their new assignment, were already plate full with assignments waiting on them to take over. That's how prevalent it is is in our community so but our team's doing great they're um, out making cases and, and putting bad people in jail every day we're really blessed too. our state attorney Phil Archer I don't know if any of you have ever had a chance to meet um, Phil but Phil's passion has always been on the economic crime side of it on the identity theft and everything else and Phil actually assigned us a full-time prosecutor to our task force to do nothing but those cases so he's as encouraged as I am that we're going to change that dynamic of one in 700 we're going to we're going to reverse it is what our goal is uh, to do it so yes Thank you. Very good presentation. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, my question is, those skimming devices, uh, is it illegal for them to produce them and sell them, design them, and uh, mass produce them, put them on the uh, Internet for sale? No. The, the way they get around that is there are legitimate uses for that. Um, if you're somebody that works at vendor shows or goes to a lot of conferences or you work the flea market or you, you have a business where you, even down to, I've seen businesses that um, are um, people in home health care management, those type of things, they, they legitimize them through that. Do I think that's a valid one? No, but that's how they legitimize it through the statute from there. So that's what makes it legal where you can possess it and, and uh, um, sell them. If we catch you using that device, it's a penalty enhancement, though, for the electronic device from it. Yes, sir. Um, in my opinion, why do I think Brevard County ranks so high? I think there's twofold. One is our senior base has definitely um, increased the volume of, of um, uh, hits that we're getting. Two, we, we are a direct pipeline from Miami and Orlando. Miami ranks number one in the world in the most incidents of credit card fraud and identity theft. So I think, I think being that pipeline is part of it. The third reason, if you will, is we have over the past, probably I'm going to say seven years, put strong emphasis here in our community. I've been, I can tell you as a matter of fact, for the past 10 years, I've been going out doing presentations just like this to every group that I could get to listen to, faith-based organizations and everything else. So the unintended consequence of that is now people know to report it to FTC when, they, when they, it happens to them. And so we're actually spiking our numbers up a little bit. But I'll take that. I'll take that, that um, being the, the, you know, one of the reasons. But I think the biggest, if I had to just pick one, I'd say our senior base is um, probably the biggest reason. Yes, ma'am. Uh. Yes. Great question. Um, her question is, um, if you're somebody that's been a victim of identity theft, you get stopped by a law enforcement officer they, and they find out there's a warrant on you or something as the um, scenarios we were talking about, how do you not come visit our facility? First of all, we have a very nice facility. I, that's one of the things I would tell you. Um, and uh, we have a protein loaf there that is really, um, the, the nutritionists are raving about it. It's really um, pretty neat. Um, actually, if you have been a victim of identity theft, I would encourage you to contact the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. You can go to my FDLE and uh, contact them. Actually, when I was running the statewide task force, one of the things that we saw a need for was to be able to give somebody, in just the same scenario you're talking about, a certificate that tells the law enforcement officer, look deeper into this. Don't just take this person that there's a warrant for them. Look deeper into it and let's see if they're actually. Because once you become a victim, FDLE will give you a, um, a certification that says, this person's been the victim of identity theft, um, you can contact this office, dot, dot, dot. So I would really encourage you, if you've been the victim of identity theft, to, to try and go through that route. They, they want your fingerprints. They need some other information. But that's handled through the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. All right? Yes, ma'am. Um, 
like a picture they somehow duplicated his license but not his picture and all that stuff uh -huh. so they got it legitimately showing their credit card or license and everything what does he do i mean he filed a police report but what do you do as far as like he froze his credit do you get a monitoring service or what do you do for the next six months a year two years forever yeah well the first thing you do is you you notify everybody that you have contact banks credit card companies credit bureaus um all of them um definitely report it to law enforcement so many times victims will say well i was told not to report it to you guys because i'm not having money report it to us not only can we maybe catch the person did it to you but we can also keep somebody else from being a victim by sending out an alert or something like that but he also needs to um, put a fraud alert on his um, information and um, uh, go to each credit bureau and make sure they have established that because the credit bureaus are supposed to share that with each other, but they don't always do it. So make sure each one of the three, um, Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, have shared that information um, from there. And then um, every, six, or every year, get a free credit report. Look to see if there's been any damage to it. Other than that, I would go to FDLE like we just talked about and get that certificate. Okay? Yes, sir. I can hear you. I'll repeat it. Okay. A few years ago, I bought a mail standing uh, mailbox mm -hmm. that had a locked mailbox on them above the locked area door. They had a little opening where you can slide a mail in. And I got a letter from the from the uh, letter carrier that says, if I don't have the door unlocked, you won't deliver the mail anymore. It had a slot on the top of it? It had a slot on the top of it. I bought it from Home Depot. And uh -huh. it said, United States Postal Service approval. Right. So I called the post office and I said, hey, what's with this law? And he said, yeah, uh, you have to keep it unlocked. Yeah, no, tell him to call Sheriff Ivy. I'd really love, <laughs> I'd really love to talk to that postal inspector. I would. So yeah. If you couldn't hear him, he was saying that the post office gave him some grief about having a locked mailbox um, and that he had to leave his mailbox unlocked. I've never heard of such a thing. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd like to talk to them. That'd, be, that'd actually be pretty fun to, uh, to have that discussion. Uh, yeah. Anything else? Sure. Uh, I'm sorry? Oh, the credit, um, the um, uh, identity theft protection companies? Um, LifeLock, um, Kroll, Legal Shield. There's actually a lot of them out there. Those are the three that, that come off the top of my head, but um, those, those are three that you can start looking at. A lot of times your credit card company will offer it to you um, as well as your bank. Okay. Yes, sir. Is there any per personal information on a like hotel key card? Yeah, is there any uh, information on a hotel key card? thing to keep in mind with a hotel key card is that they can put your information on the back of it. If you're at a resort, if you're at a casino, if you're on a cruise ship, more than likely, they've embedded your credit card number in the back of the hotel key, and the best thing to do is take it with you, shred it when you get home. If it's, it's a piece of memorabilia, you've been on a cruise, a lot of people like to keep their cruise card. If you want to keep it, take a sharp-edged instrument and scratch up the magnet stripe on the back of it so that nobody can get it. But, yeah, they can do that. Anything else? All right. Yes, sir. Uh, what information is on the back of the driver's license? The mag stripe. Mostly everything that's inside on the front of the driver's license. Um, it'll, the mag stripe there is designed for um, a trooper or a deputy, anybody to swipe it, and it actually creates the ticket base or it creates the information for it. But most everything that's on the front is on um, in it. So, yeah, the banks use it. Yeah. So, uh, all right. One more. Right. You're going to get hit. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, if, if they have, put, and the good news is we don't see that many in lines, but if they've put it on the back of the point of sale tournament, yeah, you're going to get hit, even if you're at the cash register. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Please. Yeah. He said if you call your credit card company and you get directed to somebody overseas, Asked to be redirected back to the United States to talk to them about your credit card. You can't do that. I will give one word of caution, though. There are several states in the United States right now that are farming out inmate labor to um, work with the credit card companies, and you're actually talking to an inmate when you're dealing with your credit card. I am, I am very proud to tell you. <laughs> I am very proud to tell you that the Brevard County Sheriff's Jail does not do that. In fact, if you haven't had a chance to see how we work our inmates, 
let me know. You'll be able to see our new chain gang that we put out on the side of the road. So um, that's how we work them. We're not, we're not putting them where they can get somebody's credit card. So, All right. Um, thank you for letting me be here today. Thank you, everybody.